What's up Laravel developers, it's Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to focus on notifications in Laravel. Now before I continue on with the video, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon, which is linked in the description down below. You will get some pretty cool benefits such as a private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out. And you can decide the video series that I'm going to make through polls. So if you are interested to join, the link is in the description down below. In web applications, a very important topic is notifications. If we imagine an app where we are going to notify students that they are allowed to enroll for a new course, we should look at it as a relational way. One notification will be sent to many students. So we're going to create a one-to-many notification channel. Just like with sending emails, where you perform an artisan command to pull in a PHP mail class, you can do the same exact thing for notifications. So let's navigate to the CLI. And here we need to create our first notification class. So let's say PHP artisan make me something called a notification. It accepts one argument, which will be the name of your class. Just like anything else in coding, keep it related to the task that you're going to create. So let's call it test enrollment. If we hit enter, a notification folder will be created. So if we go to Visual Studio Code, you can see that inside our app folder, there's a notifications folder with one file, a PHP class called test enrollment. So let's open it. If we take a look at the class, we can see a lot of similarities with the mail class that we created in the last video. But there are a few things different right here. Inside the constructor, we're going to pass in relevant information that you want to send through the notification. If we scroll down, you can see a via method, which accepts one param called notifiable. And what this allows us to do is basically defining which notification channels we're going to use. There's a to mail method right here. And this is an individual method that is being used for every notification channel that allows us to specifically define how to send one of these notifications. Next to the fact that you can send out notifications, you're also able to save them inside a database. We're not going to cover that in this video, but I will show you how you could easily generate a migration that is predefined for you. Let's navigate to the CLI and in here, let's perform PHP artisan notifications colon table. This command will generate a migration. Let's hit enter. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the last migration and we have a new schema called notifications. Now, if we close it off and go back to our notification class, so our test enrollment, we're able to set everything up right now and we can focus on the write and controller after. In order to pass in data inside the constructor, we need to create a new property. So let's do that. Let's say private variable enrollment data. This private property that we have will receive data and it will be passed inside the constructor. So let's do that. Let's say variable enrollment data. Inside the constructor, we could get rid of the comments and say that this enrollment data is equal to the variable that has been passed in. All right, let's scroll down because inside the to mail method, we're going to change up some things since we're receiving data through the constructor. Now let's get rid of everything that's in the line method. Let's say that we want to print out this enrollment data brackets body. Now let's also get rid of the string inside of the action. Now let's say that we want to print out this enrollment data, bracket single quotes, enrollment text. We could also replace the URL method right here. So let's do that. And let's say this enrollment data, and we want to pass in the URL. Now as a thank you, we could keep it static, but let's change that up as well. Let's say that this enrollment data, and we want to search for a thank you. And this is pretty much everything that we need. The next step is to set up our route and controller. So let's do that. Let's save the file. We are going to pass in data through the controller. So let's go to the CLI and let's perform a PHP artisan make me a controller called tests enrollment controller. Let's hit enter. Our controller has been created. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and open it. Now our test enrollment controller has been created. But before we do anything, let's define our route first. So let's open our web.php file right below all the routes that we have. Let me actually get rid of the odd error because the class hasn't been pulled in. All right, right at the bottom, let's say that we want to create a new route. 
the get method. We want the endpoint to be forward slash send dash test enrollment. We're also going to pass in a second param because we just created a controller that we want to pass in. So let's add brackets because we're going to pass in two params. The first one is the class name. So we just created tests enrollment controller, colon, colon, class, comma, single quotes, because we're going to pass in the method. So let's say that the method that we're going to create in a second is called send test notification. Save it, close it off, and we're ready to focus on the core logic inside our controller. So let's open our test enrollment controller. Let's get rid of the comments. Let's create a public function send test notification. Inside the notification class, we defined a property called enrollment data that will contain specific data that we want to send to a user. So let's redefine it right here. So let's say variable enrollment data is equal to an array. Let's go inside the array and hit enter. What I usually do is defining the keys first. Since we did that already in the notification class, it must be easy for us right now. First one is the body. The second one is the enrollment text. Then we got the URL. And the last one was the thank you. We are ready to define the values of our keys. So for the body, let's say you received a new test notification. For the enrollment text, let's say you are allowed to enroll. Now for the URL, let's just keep it equal to the URL method that will redirect to the forward slash endpoint. And as a thank you, let's say you have 14 days to enroll. Before I continue on with notifying students on their new test enrollment, I want to go over two different ways of sending a notification. Since you can either use the notification vacate or use the notifiable trait to an eloquent class, which sends a notification to all users. Now let's start off by doing that. Let's start off with a notifiable trait. By default, every model that you create, so let's open the user model, you will see a use statement at the top right here, which will pull in a notifiable trait that will be used inside the class. This allows us to do something with a user inside the controller. So what we need to do is to pull in the user inside the controller. So right above our array, let's say variable user is equal to user. Let's pull in the user model, colon, colon, first. So get me the first value. Right below the array, we need to send the notification via the trait. And since we're using the notifiable inside the user model, like I just explained, we're going to use the toMail method. Right below our array, let's say that variable user is notifying. What we're going to notify is a new test enrollment, which is the notifications class that we defined. In here, we're going to pass in variable enrollment data, which will be used inside the constructor of the class. Save it. In order to send the mail, we need to go to the browser, obviously. Let's go to Laravel. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash send dash test enrollment. Hit enter. We have not defined a front end, so the endpoint will be blank for us. But I, and you probably too, have set up Mailtrap to catch emails. So if we open Mailtrap, you can see that we receive one email called test enrollment, which is a notification for the user. Besides the notifiable trait, there's another way to send emails, and that's through the notification vacate. To be honest, I prefer to use the trait, but I will show you the notification vacate since it is something you will see a lot on the internet. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's comment out this line right here. And on the line below, we're going to use the notification vacate. So let's say notification. Let's pull it in and be aware that you pull in the support vacate. Colon, colon, send. The first param is where we're going to send it to. We grabbed up the first user. So let's say variable user, comma. And then we're going to pass in the notification class. So new test enrollment. And in here, we're going to pass in variable enrollment data. Now be aware that you pull in the right use statement. The one that goes to illuminate, support, vacates, and then to notification. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh our local host for slash send test enrollment. Go to Mailtrap and we just received a new email. 
Like I said, both of them have advantages and disadvantages. With the method that we just used, we basically need to pass in the notifiable and the notification right here, which is a little bit extra work. But a huge advantage might be the fact that you could pass in more than one notifiable at the same time. Now this was it for this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.